Yes, we are on. Right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Amrita Pandey, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here on this day on behalf of Physical Education Foundation of India, Facebook Pefi Live 2.0. I hope you all are healthy and safe at your ends. I would like to thank you joining us today for this special presentation on recreation and physical education. Where do they fit and way forward? And this is becoming more and more critical every day. Well, Benjamin Franklin once said. an investment in knowledge pays the best interest it is on occasions like this we get opportunities to invest more in our knowledge and understanding we look forward to get an exposure about what the think tanks of this very dynamic field of physical education and sports think on behalf of team pefi i would like to welcome you all once again for the second session of pefi live 2.0 We have with us today Dr. Lee Kwan Meng and Dr. Pinar Yaprak, accompanied by exclusive members of Team Pefi. Moving right along, it is now my pleasure to introduce our guest speakers, Dr. Lee Kwan Meng, uh, PhD in Extension Education, Master of Science in Park and Outdoor Recreation, MBA in International Management, Diploma in Human Resource Management. diploma in recreation management currently working as independent consultant and freelancer former development officer malaysia paralympic council mpc former assistant executive secretary malaysian youth council myc specialized in youth mentoring youth development leisure and recreation programs recreation management mass sports and sports for all and much more published many books national and international journals attended many national and international level programs provide intellectual consultation to research cooperative relationship and scope of research he works as a reference advisor on youth development he has produced academic papers on youth development dr lee is accompanied by dr pinar yaprak currently an assistant professor at gazi university faculty of sports sciences ankara turkey She serves as a reviewer in interdisciplinary scholarly journals and scientific committees and as a board member or advisor at several national and international organizations such as ISSA International Sociology of Sports Association ISA RC27 that is International Sociological Association's Research Committee on Sociology of Sports former Middle East representative and many others She is actively involved in many projects positions and process of sports management and development as well as other interdisciplinary fields she has carried out an international in different organization including organization a num organizing a number of leading national and international meetings and courses and many others from team pefi we are accompanied by dr chetan kumar a big supporter and joint secretary of physical education foundation of india along with mr uma shankar akharia and iim alumni and entrepreneur he is a co-founder of nirvana an organization engaged into providing yoga and wellness training to corporates and institutions the technical sex expert for the today's session thank you i am sure this is going to be a great one hour of interaction and learning for all of us over to you doc lee and dr pinar okay um <clears throat> pinar uh, okay can you start the slide or you want me to link up <clears throat> pinar okay <clears throat> um <clears throat> excuse me so This is the topic we are looking at for today's session, um, and then um, how do I go to the next slide? Oh. Okay, <clears throat> just to add in a bit to my background, besides what uh, Dr. Amrita says, I was recently I just ended my contract with the University of Malaysia, 
which is um, second uh, highest ranked university in Malaysia. So um, I'm also a member of a World Asia organization and a review of their journals and so on. So actually my background is um, beside youth, uh, I've also been involved in uh, recreation in the field and academically. Um, so, <clears throat> so, and a bit of a sports and so on, especially sports for our area. So, okay, so if you have anything to contact me, you can see my email there. Um, okay. If after this session, anybody wants any further information from me, you, you can get to me through that email. Um, all right, uh, next slide is, um, in case any of you are not familiar with uh, where Malaysia is, this is where we are in the middle of the South, A <coughs> in the middle of South Asia, bordered by Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, Singapore. So <coughs> I'm located in the, <coughs> In the Kuala Lumpur area, although not exactly in the city of Kuala Lumpur, my place is called Subang Jaya, which is about 15 kilometers out of the uh, center of Kuala Lumpur. So it's not really that, that far. So I'm located here. Our country has split into two sides. We have two areas in um, Peninsula, where we are, where I'm located um, in this Peninsula Malaysia, and uh, another, and across the South China Sea, we have two more states, Kuala and Trawa. So our main, uh, at the moment, the current total population is about 33 million now, almost. Um, and uh, these are our main racial composition, Malay, Chinese, Indian. And of course, we have a lot of other ethnic in indigenous people and uh, other races. Okay, this is about my country and me. And now let's go to Pina. <laughs> are you hearing my words? Uh, I am not sure if I unmute myself. Yeah, you can hear me, right? Yeah, so, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, um, Dr. Anita introduced me well, so I'm just uh, skipping this slide, but uh, here, just to say I'm from Gazi University again, you can reach me from that email address anytime you wish. And uh, my research focus has been uh, around women's studies, ch children's welfare and deaf studies and mostly around social, cultural, political aspects of sports. I'm a graduate of physical education teaching department in my bachelor and uh, bachelor. And after that, I continue in sports management and sociology. And I have uh, many interdisciplinary connections in my studies. And uh, we can go in further later. We have a considerably long, long uh, presentation. So I will be skipping those information we will probably have more time to co uh, communicate about the, these issues. The Turkey, if you have known and about it, um, I'm pretty sure most of you know, it's uh, here, it's a broad peninsula actually, that's surrounded by the Black Aegean and Mediterranean Seas, Black Sea Aegean and Mediterranean Seas. And Istanbul and capital city Ankara, where I live now, uh, are the most important centers of Turkish science and culture. So I lived in Istanbul partly and now living in Ankara and my uh, institution Gazi University is based in Ankara. Back to you, Dr. Lee. Okay. Um, this is um, just a brief uh, background about uh, physical education and sports studies in Malaysia. We have actually totally in Malaysia, we have about 20 public uh, that is government universities and uh, another about 20 private institutions. But um, for physical education, there are only about two universities that run these courses. Uh, one is from University Putra Malaysia, where I come from. I did my master's PhD and uh, my research fellowship uh, recently. So they are under the physical education uh, under the educational studies faculty. So, um, but, um, but in another top, uh, we are the second top university in Malaysia. And then the first one, another university that has physical education is um, Uni University Malaya. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Yep. So um, there is a, uh, there's, 
while in the UPM, the physical education and uh, sports studies are under the faculty of education in University of Malaya. In case any of you know Dr. Lim Boon Hui there, uh, they have a different uh, faculty that runs physical education and sports. The sports is under the uh, Center for Sports and Exercise Sciences, while uh, the physical education studies are in, um, in the faculty of education. And um, we have also a few other universities that mostly runs uh, sports courses, sports science courses. One is uh, University of Technology Mara, where they run both um, sports sciences and recreation uh, uh, studies. In my UPM, recreation studies goes under the Faculty of Forestry as Outdoor Recreation. There's also another private university uh, called the uh, Tung Kok Durama College, which also has physical education studies, but um, the, the primary uh, physical education programs in Malaysia are for degree level is under this um, our two universities, two main universities. And then next slide. Um, so actually, uh, in terms of uh, studentship and so on popularity, the, there are more students pursuing sports studies and physical education. And many of them are actually sports practitioners, officials, and a lot of them are athletes. Um, only those who undertake physical education studies are those who are moving into the teaching profession. Well, those who are <clears throat> planning to pursue career in sports and so on management, they are mostly doing the, the sports science studies. However, for graduates of these universities, they will be, if they, go, if they teach in school, they'll be teaching our, our secondary level. Next slide. Well, uh, oh, okay. Um, go back. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, let me. We we also have uh, our our government also have our teacher training institutes where um, they do have physical education studies um, for classes, but those are run and this uh, teacher training institute will uh, prepare physical education teachers for the primary schools. So. <clears throat> So the graduate uh, physical educators will be uh, those from the uni universities, okay? And uh, we have two main association uh, dealing with physical education. One is the, where I currently belong, the Malaysian Association for Physical Education, Sports Science and Fitness, <clears throat> but it uh, has, hasn't been very active recently. Uh, however, UPM has, uh, we have set up their own uh, sports, uh, Physical Educators uh, Society in, for the graduates and alumni. So um, usually when it comes to PE and sports, students um, will decide whether to pursue a PE or sports studies. And uh, recreation is a minor studies. Not so, not that popular. Okay, so, um, <laughs> all right. I'm pushing you forward. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so for this talk, um, in the light of uh, recent developments in the sports scenario and uh, the COVID and so on, so this talk is to just to discuss and examine whether all the traditional physical education curriculum are still relevant or not to meet current needs and the situation because uh, sports has also evolved and so has uh, health, well-being and uh, issues and so on especially now with the health. So, so for, this, uh, for this talk, both of us, Pina and me, will, <coughs> will go through these areas um, and see at the end of the, of the day of the session, we'll see what is relevant and what is not relevant and whether there should be any change in the future of uh, physical education or not. So we are just sharing and um, okay. So next um, will be uh, Pina slice about the history. Yeah, and, um, yeah um, the, to review the physical education, sports, health, fitness, recreation, well-being scenario that uh, Dr. Lee offered, that uh, it's actually, as you can imagine, it's a very wide issue. 
we could go back to the uh, historical slides, but it it will be very limited time. So I will just um, uh, quickly overview some of the things and point out something. And this uh, table um, you may recognize uh, from your research before. It's a good one, uh, actually provided in his book before, and Cochley also uh, modified this uh, from Gutmann. And the Jay Coakley, the sports sociologist, this, this is from his book. Uh, the table uh, tells us uh, um, how the sports games contests uh, evolved from uh, back to today or to, towards modern sports. It says, um, uh, Gutmann tells us that the, the secularism, equality, specialization, rationalization, bureaucratization, quantification, and keeping records are like, um, um, features of modern sports today, and they don't exist exactly in every stage of the history. But uh, it's not, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, those features uh, exactly didn't uh, include it in the history uh, at any time. Uh, for example, if we go back to even the, the latest, no, I mean, uh, earliest known civilizations such as Sumerians, it was three, 5,000 years ago, we see some record keeping at that time too. They were in their, um, you know, inscriptions. The in the, their, uh, they usually write their history uh, like poems. And their poems they talk about like the distance, how uh, far it was, and how fast they uh, go and come back from those points. For example, one of the king tells about uh, in one day he went to one. A city a town and he came back in the same day and catch the festival in the city where they where he came from so <laughs> the kind of record keepings uh, exists in history and we don't know much about uh, those earlier times so um, we new findings are exciting too like in Gebekli Tepe um, you may uh, find more stuff uh, even back in 9000 years ago so um, not only those things, but uh, you know the modern physical education taught that the domains that we are trying to support, like uh, physical domains, affective domains, and you know psychological domains, they are also actually uh, found in history, even in Sumerians. Again, uh, they were supporting the whole development of person, and that is evident in Turkish history, as I know. And I believe in. Um, India is real, I believe, but I don't know yet. <laughs> so it is um, maybe even found in your uh, researchers' findings, if uh, we are not aware of it. Um, those uh, things found are uh, in our history, the whole development, total development of person is valued. Uh, they uh, refer to physical, mental, cognitive, social, and heroic issues, especially in Turkish history, maybe in Indian history too. I, when I see some connections, the heroic is like uh, in today's uh, physical education or sports context, they may be included as a fair play more <laughs> often. Uh, fair play heroic is not uh, exactly the same, but it's very connected. So that's the uh, another feature of the historical aspects that it uh, seems very well connected to today. So what is happening? Uh, the, back to you, Dr. Lee. OK. Um, as you all know, uh, I won't go specifically into detail on these two things, but basically, um, from the literature and uh, going through what is uh, in the curriculum and studies about on physical education, you find that there are two main areas. Yes. Hello? Yes, we hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so generally, you, you find that physical education covers two things: sports and health. Uh, these are the primary issues uh, which are covered in uh, physical education studies. But <clears throat> as you can see, that um, sports has evolved a lot over the years, and um, it's no longer just that much physical, but um, it has gone between, it has gone into industry, multi-million dollar industry. So it's just not about developing people, but it has become very commercialized. 
And as you can see that almost all, uh, a lot of pro professional athletes are really uh, very wealthy and so on because of the interest in the uh, sports and so on. But, um, but, I, but if, I didn't share the sports pyramid here, but many of you know about the sports pyramid. So at the elite level, it's only at the top of the pyramid, where the mass in the masses sports is more for the grassroots in sports for all and recreation. So on the other hand, when you talk about physical activity as so one, the issue of health come in. And this is where um, now in this uh, in this latest health crisis and so on, people are beginning to realize the importance of health and physical activity. So at the grassroots level, sports may not be so relevant to the general public now, you see? Uh, that is why we will examine whether physical education should cater more to the masses in terms of the health or still cater to the sports industry which only benefits um, a minor group of uh, athletes. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to some sports people, I'm more into looking at sports more from the development area than rather the sports performance. I'm not very sympathetic to some of these uh, over greedy sports people. I'm sorry with my words, but uh, that's how I see the reality. But I feel that um, for the masses, sports uh, physical education should uh, look into whether it, it benefits the masses in terms of health, fun, recreation and so on. Yeah, can I add something here too? Sure. Uh, we speak about professional athletes earn million dollars and lots of money, but not all as we know it. There is inequality in payments, and mm -hmm. uh, that uh, sometimes very um, confuse people that uh, they think that uh, sport is all about those professionals and. Uh, they earn so much, but it's not actually. Many athletes don't get paid that much. And also the public health, uh, in terms of public health, the sport, physical, physical education or recreation may not be supported as much as that. But uh, this kind of uh, inequalities, uh, like a support of developmental part of sport may be lacking. It should be recognized. But on the other hand, um, Athletes or people uh, who are employed in professional sports, they also you know, have right to earn. They are uh, professionalized on, in their own area. So um, it's, um, there are things that uh, we should be looking very critically and carefully, which, is, uh, which parts are ethical and not ethical. It's, um, it can be tricky if you don't look um, in detail. So. I'm moving to next slide. Lots of I, I, I just had a bit of what Dr. Pina says. It's true, actually, uh, a lot of people do realize importance of sports and physical activity. It's just that uh, when we look, read media and many things and so on, we those areas, those interests, even sports for all, I mean, all recreation, uh, sort of uh, has been de emphasized. It's, you know, it doesn't gain prominence. So people, will, unfortunately, people see sports as all those elite and uh, professionalism. That's so, all. But if we yeah, can. Um, relevant, but um, yeah. it has relevancy to just, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> to move forward, um, these are some of the questions all of us this profession in this field have to examine at the end of this talk. I mean, I'm not gonna give you, we are not gonna give you any answers. You have to look at it. So these are all the possibilities about status of physical education in the new, what they call it now, new normal or future. You see, it's up to all of you practitioners and educators to, to question yourself about all this, uh, questions we put forward on the future of physical education. Next. So scope, um, this is generally which 
about. I'm going to skip through quickly. Most of you are practitioners. You already know what these are. So uh, just to uh, highlight the few, the main common features of physical education, as I said, also it's about the health part, about the mental well-being and so on, which probably it needs some uh, prominence and highlighting nowadays in this uh, current health uh, situation and after the big locking down for quite a number of uh, weeks, uh, even my local newspaper, people are starting with the release, people are starting to go back hiking and jogging and so on. So the, the thing is that whether physical education should meet all these needs or not. Well, on the other hand, you find that the sports industry is suffering <laughs> with all these lockdowns and uh, restrictions. So these are the questions which are uh, we cannot answer to, for everybody, but it's up to you to look into it. Okay, next. So of course, you, you see um, that these are all the things, the main elements of uh, physical education and so on. So um, if any of you have any queries regarding this point or what, we, I mean, you can forward it into the chat later or, or you know. But generally, uh, in in uh, education system where physical education are taught, this is what um, this is the main elements of it. It's compulsory. It is taught, it is taught formally in lessons. It has to start from foundation level, and then the teachers cannot be just simply any teacher. They have to be trained and follow uh, pre plan and structured which unfortunately doesn't seem to be happening nowadays. And uh, I will come to that in the following slides. Okay, nice. Right. So uh, these are the primary functions of it, which most of you are uh, just to recall. Uh, of, although, I mean, with the limitations of slide, we cannot list out everything and you know, different curriculum or the different countries will have a variation of these functions, but um, just to highlight some of the main primary features of what physical education functions are. So um, if you look at physical education, you see these are all the typical areas. Um, um, and I, a lot of them are actually about body, physical movement, you know, and uh, of course, as well as uh, some social aspects of recreation and some institutions also, some curriculum would add in administration and management of PE uh, for the sports organizations. Okay. Adopted this, uh, education yeah. Too. Yeah, yeah, some institutions also is, um, specialize in adopted physical education. Would you like to add something more to that slide, Dr. Lee? Um, moving on. Okay. Uh, Waiting. Yep. Uh, adaptive physical education normally it goes into, if I'm not wrong, uh, to develop uh, in the sports area, it will be to the Paralympics athletes. So on the sports side, it will be more for the Paralympic athletes. Well, some, of course, uh, for the general public, uh, for the general people with disability, it is. Um, it is where recreation, leisure studies come in, uh, elements, uh, and in recreation, there's also a branch which I didn't include in this slide about uh, therapeutic recreation for those with, uh, with these issues and so on. So um, these are generally, but of course, this is a very specialized area. And as you know, um, there are many types of uh, physical disabilities. So it's not a, it's not something that can be taught generally in the schools or or system because it's very specialized. But some uh, <clears throat> schools where they have a special education, then they may have this form of study for physical education. All right. Yeah. Uh, can I add something here? Yeah. Uh, we generally um, confuse the um, uh, disability it, um, groups uh, like uh, as if they all related to Paralympics, but there are 
different groups to like there's special olympics as you know uh, as separate from paralympics they try to do the organizations uh, as much as together but uh, there is another group also they are completely separate and this group is deaf and hard of hearing and they organize their deaf olympics and it's not um, uh, at the same time with olympics and paralympics and uh, that uh, actually includes lots of uh, deaf community, deaf identity, deaf culture issues. It's uh, like uh, the, about the scope of our time. So I just want to point out that it's because uh, so much confused. So each group here actually, even within the specific group has a uh, lot uh, of details to be considered. You cannot just look at a person, oh, that's deaf. So that's the needs of that person because um, they also differ among themselves uh, in terms of their needs. So it's, uh, as Dr. Lee said, a very specialized issue, but it should be uh, included in um, every school as possible because we live together in this world and we should be aware of these uh, uh, features and we, uh, about these cultures and communities. So it could be uh, much democratic and a peaceful world to live in. Uh, lots of issues that I uh, included here. Uh, we may not be able to talk, but you can always come back, read, and uh, you know, explore from there. And uh, I continue to address those. Dr. Lee, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. They are related to the disability issues again. Uh, I mentioned here the there is also another important paper that to consider about the people with disabilities, also uh, about um, deaf people. Uh, Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities is the first legally binding international instrument. You can just um, keep in mind if you never checked before, there's Article 30, especially in related to sports, uh, recreation and cultural activities, participation in cultural life, recreation, leisure and sport, namely. So it includes, um, some of the titles related to us. I put here um, those examples and we will be talking about those if we have more time. And because uh, they are not like um, just in past, for example, nowadays we have COVID new situation, quarantine, but this paper doesn't, uh, we don't just throw this paper away. We should uh, be looking at this paper and adopt us, uh, adopt our situations, uh, think about this, and how can we achieve these goals within our conditions, new conditions now? So those papers can guide us well. And IFAPA, Adapted Physical Activity, is another field. Um, this is the uh, things the IFAPA, uh, the organization listed in their web page in past, maybe it's not access accessible now. So I put it here. So, and. Uh, Majority of uh, research in disability sport is associated with mostly like um, physiological, psychological effects of ex exercise and the salient issues like, such as classification, doping, performance enhancement, so on. So the uh, sociocultural, historical, sociopolitical issues in this uh, related to these groups are relatively new, not much intensified, but it's um developing lately it's not like uh, 10 years before because much of research done now but it's uh, not as those researches that started earlier so um deaf people and people with disabilities uh, we have lots of uh, issues to um, address we don't have enough time but I put here some of the you know, prominent things, uh, the problems that we face in this area, uh, such as um, they are uh, less inclined to participate in physical activity as known so much, I just move on. Discrimination, internalized oppression, disconnection from others, most common things. And uh, it's just not occurs in physical environments. Apparently it happens in all contexts, you know, violation of those people's rights. It happens in virtual contexts too. So most common barriers are listed here. Um, okay. Um, I just move on and yeah. you can come back and read those points. 
we have progress in those areas too. It's not just bad things, but uh, we will be hopefully having another session to, to go deeply on those issues. Back to you, Dr. Lee. <laughs> okay. Um, over here is just to, uh, to give the, to share with you the primary differences in the between characteristics of sports and recreation. So then from here you can uh, work out in your mind how they really sort of uh, they fit in. There, there seems to be very distinctive with each other, but um, of course uh, the sports uh, we are looking here, we define is more towards the competitive and professional area. Well, when it comes to the health and uh, well-being part, they will be they will look more towards the these uh, recreational elements. So, if we want to have both areas, well-being and sports, then we physical education will have to consider <coughs> um, some modules or curriculum in that incorporates recreational form of activities and uh, and areas and disciplines. Okay, next. So um, <clears throat> here is um, generally what I, my understanding of uh, recreation is about, uh, education and recreation. In fact, uh, if anyone wants to go to the professional body and attack academy area of recreation, you can go into uh, look into uh, you can look go into the World Asia website. Okay, W L O, World Asia O. Right, uh, looks like Pina. Uh, we have to speed up. Our time is running out. So. Uh, these are um, the general characteristics of uh, what physical education. And of course, um, back, 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 the, the three domains. Yep. Three domains, okay. <laughs> yeah, so when you talk about education, generally in any general education studies, you have these uh, three domains, which was uh, formulated by Craswell uh, uh, and uh, Bloom and so on. So whether you know, so it goes into these three uh, the general domains, it goes in every forms of uh, these education programs uh, outcomes. All right, next. Um, so PE sports human right. We have to start moving a bit forward. Uh, next, next. Next. Okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah. all right. So as you see, that's how I mentioned that sports is not physical anymore. Um, if you go to the website on top and sports, you find that actually there are around 170 recognized sports. But even there, it's not enough. Uh, in many countries got their own indigenous sports and so on. So actually, it goes beyond that. So in the Olympic, uh, even in the IOC itself, they already recognize 40 sports. Although not many, not all, you find them in the Olympic Games. And uh, for the Tokyo Olympics, they have even proposed six new sports already. So generally. If you see the categories, categories of sport, there are so many. So it's not all physical, like even they even recognize chess, bridge, and um, mental games. And of course, next. Now it's um, okay, next. Next. Okay, and now you see that esports is, uh, is becoming the trend now, very, very popular. So, uh, so esports does it involve physical development as well and motor skills? We you that has the physical education uh, educators have to look into that as well, and of course because uh, this is where just now I was a bit uh, critical about uh, professional sports and so on because of the negative issues uh, elements that uh, scrub up in uh, sports with all this doping, corruption, power struggle, inequalities, max fixing, and so on. You know, so while most of us believe that sports has uh, a lot of positive values, but because of uh, commercialization, um, you find that uh, these negative elements of uh, have, have start to rear its head, and you know, so in that event, as you see, even one whole country can be banned from the Olympic Games. 
So is that what we want to instill in to the athletes in the sports uh, industry to physical education, to educating education and physical education? Okay, next. So as you see, um, yep, sports in society, maybe uh, Pina, you want to highlight a bit? Uh, yeah, we can uh, skip those things, you know, the importance of uh, researching yeah. sports in society. Yeah, so, okay. A different aspect. Lots of uh, ethical issues, critical issues addressed in this line of studies. So yeah. um, we will so, be things, uh, current things will be maybe more uh, useful now. So I move yep. on. Yep. Uh, we we look we go towards now the end part of this uh, talk, which uh, we are almost uh, at the end of it. Um, so uh, these are the main issues about health and so on. Uh, I mean, you find that our society already um, have been very health conscious in our human society. Of course, uh, it depends on countries again, in Malaysia also. A lot of people are already indulging in weekends and evenings and running and parks and so on. But um, the recent COVID issue uh, has even make it more important. So people are doing it on their own, but uh, it would be good if uh, physical educators start educating people on how to exercise properly and so on for their well-being. And, uh, you see that the elderly has become a very high health risk in this current issue. So it's not only for the young people, but it also involves the elderly, the senior citizen, which generally is those above 60 and above in the 70s. Okay, so people have now become very conscious about the health and so on, well-being. But uh, it would be good if physical educators come forward to explain more on these issues, to educate the people in general and so on, the public. All right, next. So the new challenges, um, we do have uh, issues in our physical education classes in Malaysia because it's, uh, it's not an examination subject. It has become uh, in, in schools, it has been neglected. Sometimes they just assign uh, physical educator, qualified physical ed teachers into non-physical education. And then they, and then they place uh, untrained physical educators, uh, untrained teachers in physical education to take care of physical education classes. So uh, even parents themselves, unfortunately, do not seem to bother much about the students' physical education lessons because it's not an examination subject. I, I don't know about I, some countries, but where Malaysia is concerned, it's a co-curriculum and uh, it doesn't, well, uh, when it comes to passing exams, the parents and the schools and the system will focus more on those uh, examination subjects, give more priorities to it. So these are among the challenges which the school educators are facing and the, uh, in our country and probably in some of the countries, okay? Yeah, here I should add that uh, they, uh, people, uh, for example, with disabilities, uh, they are, yeah, extra challenged during this time, especially, but uh, on the other hand, this is not new for them uh, facing with challenges, but uh, for, uh, you know, the norm, um, general population, it's a new thing. So the, um, yeah, people for the first time, for example, were not able to go out limited in many ways. That has been the normal of these people, especially um, challenged people. And I'm saying normal, but it's not acceptable. Uh, so that doesn't mean that uh, they didn't uh, feel the burden. Uh, in fact, uh, they did more uh, uh, they did more uh, challenges, but uh, they just uh, uh, they are just used to maybe uh, in uh, more resilient maybe in those things. So their um, complaints may be different than other people. For example, we heard people saying, I'm so bored inside, uh, why I cannot go outside. But when you look at the people with disabilities, they were complaining about the 
that, uh, for example, they cannot access the information. They don't see the sign language uh, cl classes at education. So it was, uh, uh, it could be seen in the reactions of people to the difference in reactions of people. Um, okay, I'm skipping those, uh, let yep. me see the time. Yeah, I just inserted some of the things here, but uh, we may well, have them. you can come back and check them. So, uh, okay, we'll pass this, uh, bypass all these things. Uh, let's go to the final slides, uh, the future of physical education. Final one, okay. Yep, this last few slides. So, uh, so as um, these are, uh, some of the text uh, proposals which I found from some uh, literature about how, where physical education should go, if uh, that is if physical education is going to be continued in the school systems. Um, this was from some journal articles which I found um, that some other researchers and so on. So, and especially now, new technologies are very important. You know, now you are learning PE and health exercise online now, for example, during this COVID thing. So, uh, this is a new way of teaching now, physical education and so on. Okay, next. Um, all right, this is the future. And then you look at this, uh, the, this uh, comparison, probably what it's all about, where we should move forward and so on. Um, we don't have time to highlight and then to conclude, we have to have, we should look into all these questions. I can't, we can't give you specific answers to these things, physical education, because there are so many factors, variables involved and uh, different countries have different needs. So as physical educators, it's up to you individually or respectively to, to look into where, physical education should go. And um, one more slide. Uh, in the nutshell, this is a general issue concern, concerning uh, sports, health, and physical education, so uh, which will be related to physical education. Um, and uh, I think one last slide. Um, OK. So uh, just to throw the line, uh, food for thought, of course, um, in fact, leisure education is already well promoted by uh, WRO, World Leisure. Uh, it's just that um, I just throw it in and then it's very, in fact, it, it's more en encompassing than physical education or do you want to just focus on sports education, recreation, and of course, whether all these things should be incorporated, all these, ideas should be incorporated into physical education or they should be separate forms of uh, program or, uh, in addition to, to supplement physical education program. So um, uh, Pina, um, anything you want to add in to this uh, conclusion part? Uh, not to this conclusion, uh, but uh, lots uh, of things to uh, speak, but we can maybe move on to questions and discuss with them too. We skipped a lot of um, points here, but uh, I believe they will be able to find them uh, useful. Um, and anything else they want to know, they can just, uh, oops, I accidentally closed it, I guess. <laughs> um, they can just uh, reach out to us uh, by our emails. And uh, yeah, I can just thank them. and. Just uh, keep in mind, uh, it's, uh, the International Sociology of Sport Association uh, organizes um, Congress, every, organizing Congress normally every year, but uh, uh, this year it was uh, going to be held in uh, Chile. It uh, postponed now. New dates will be announced soon. It's a Sociology of Sports Congress, if you're interested in. And they have uh, the journal uh, in association with this uh, uh, association and if you are interested it's just um, uh, another journal good journal that you can consider i was going to highlight more of them uh, but uh, we just said limited time but you can find them in the presentation okay um thank you 
to the audience, wherever you are and wherever you are. Uh, because of uh, this limited time, we just highlight some of the issues. We are unable to go into the details on those uh, more specifically on some of the issues, some of the concerns. Well, if, you, if anybody has suggestions, it's up to the organizers. To yeah, Dr. Offer. Lee, there is a question. Yeah. Uh, Sakshi Mridal from Noida wants to ask, what are the modifications adopted to implement inclusive education? Oh, the modules. <laughs> um, it, okay, generally we are talking about physical education or all this education as a whole, right? But um, when it comes to module, of course, uh, I. If you do, uh, if you go further, you may find that um, based on different needs, different modules can be included. So that's nothing wrong. If anybody, I don't see anything wrong. If an, anybody uh, wants to include any modules in that area, because I, I, I personally feel that physical education should not be too rigid to stick to the traditional modules, but. Um, it should uh, be adapted as I have proposed in the concluding part that it can be adapted to include whatever other modules or areas uh, that is needed. I, I can't answer specifically on that, you know, the inclusive mode education, but it, it can be uh, it can be looked into provided the, the, the system allows them to be flexible and adaptable. That's how I say it. Can I add something to that too? Yep, okay. Uh, physical education at home is different uh, than the usual one we are used to. And mm -hmm. there are lots of weaknesses and um, also strong part, strengths about it too. We should uh, think about all those parts. Weaknesses are strong, but they can be overcome somehow. <laughs> For example, lack of equipment was a very big issue. Not all has the uh, computer or all kinds of equipment in their home. That was the biggest part because we cannot include everyone in education, for example, because of that. Lack of child interest to participation in physical education from virtual classes are a big problem. It's not like uh, if we create a new ways of uh, technological lessons, it won't uh, grab the interest of children. It may not grab the interest of children. I see a lot of um, of a different kind of a very well prepared lessons, but children may not still paying attention to a computer class. You know, it's like a, because of that we are like having so much parent involvement now during those quarantine days. So when we are developing, redeveloping our content, we should be considering the adult person, whoever it is, with the child. We should be including them. Uh, how to, we should be concerned about how to include them too. So it's, uh, there are lots to consider, like new space arrangements, uh, grabbing attention, including parents, new tools, doc documents, videos. Uh, one, uh, I was talking about the strengths of the situation. Documents actually uh, may uh, provide better understanding of our field, uh, better than before maybe, because we were giving those physical education lessons and maybe we may not be able to grab the children attention in terms of values of this uh, field, uh, the importance of these um, areas, uh, how uh, importance of having those uh, skills and physical activity in life uh, time, you know. And because of these documents, we are delivering to families, including also families, you know, people around them, including the um, you know, the environment of the children, maybe it uh, will help more. So I don't want to take your time so much. I know there are other meetings, but these are like, um, uh, can be advantage of nowadays, so just to highlight. I, so, okay, I just want to add in to uh, what Dr. Pina says um, uh, indirectly. Uh, another issue I look at, I realize is that about who are the physical educators? Are they the teachers in schools or others because uh, recently there was a, because of this COVID thing and the restriction that travels, even in Malaysia, there was a case of grandparents teaching the children at home because the children are separated 
they couldn't go to school and they are separated by the parents. And also parents like uh, Dr. Pilar herself also has to teach their children, you know, as to educate in school at home. So uh, it may, even though it's not about physical education, but in general education, but definitely it applies to physical education that we have uh, homeschooling by untrained physical educators. Of course, uh, like Dr. Pinaske, she's a trained physical educator, so there's no problem, but what about others? So should we target train, to train physical educators only to teachers in school or now even to parents or even grandparents? So this is a... Yeah, another question. thing, please look into the, like uh, not only COVID related contents in but, online, for example, but also long distance learning contents because we uh, sometimes make this mistake because there are some very good contents about how to adapt our teaching in virtual setting. Uh, it they, they dates back to earlier years, you know. I find very useful uh, sources from, for example, in 19, uh, 2010. There are some good documents. <laughs> Just be member of those um, academic uh, platforms. You can find uh, many different examples from those platforms. So you can follow me too on Facebook. I'm only on Facebook. I'm sharing those kind of information uh, continuously. There are some good examples uh, you can reach out. So in this sense that um, should physical education curriculum be extended to, to methodologies teaching uh, out of school parents and so on. So instead of just teaching, training educators for the school system. So situation has <laughs> arise that we need physical educators beyond just beyond the schools now. Okay. Right, uh, sir, just one more question. Uh, Raman Gupta wants to know how far eSport has developed in your respective countries. <coughs> Whose country? Turkey, in your Russia? respective countries. Okay. Uh, yes, it has grown uh, leaps and bounds here in my in Malaysia. There are a lot of online championships and so on, uh, especially even during the COVID thing. Uh, a lot of uh, tournaments, which I see every we day. Yep. So it, it's growing leaps and bounds, and uh, but it's mostly run very commercially. Um, so it, I I even saw e esports and so on being played in the um, in shopping malls. When I this is some shopping mall, I saw some tournaments going on, and you know there were these people in the machines. But during the lockdown, they were not able to have it there, so uh, they have been doing it uh, from the homes and so on, and uh, and virtually. So it's becoming very popular here in Malaysia as well. And, uh, and, and it's even gone into our regional games. In Southeast Asia, we have the Southeast Asian Games and Asian Games. It's already being incorporated into our regional games now, eSports. Yes, uh, in Turkey, uh, before COVID, it was not uh, well known. Actually, the, there is a federation, mm -hmm. eSports federation set up in Turkey too. And they start their activities, and it seems like mobilized more in during those days. But uh, for exact uh, functions of them, I can give more information. Email that um, uh, person uh, who questioned that who uh, is that I couldn't get the name well. But uh, if uh, remember my email address, Pinaria bracket Gazi Edutere E D U T R. So uh, I can give even more details on that. I, I was uh, gathering already. It's not oh. like uh, on the news and you don't see much around Turkey. It was like a less, uh, it didn't have so much activity, but it's now mobilized in Turkey. Uh, okay, just to add in one more. Uh, since you are keen on knowing the esports, I don't have the research things with me, but if you email me, I. I have two friends from two other universities, uh, National University and the University uh, Technology Mara, who have been doing some research on uh, esports. So um, if you can email me or contact whatever, I can um, probably refer you to my two of my friends. One is a lecturer, is a sports lecturer from the National uh, Sports Law Lecturer. He has published a few books on sports <coughs> law. And he has been doing some research, and then another one 
associate pro both of them are associate professors. You want to know more, I can um, refer you to them to get more information. We have been conducting some research from their respective universities. Okay. Right. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Lee and Dr. Pinar, for your wonderful and informative session. Uh, moving ahead, I would now like to request the person who always believes in hard work, consistency, patience, and honesty. He has done his doctoral, pre-doctoral, master's and bachelor's degree, all in the physical education, and has done several certificate courses in the field like NIS <coughs> for athletics, sports fitness nutrition, yoga, anti-doping, CPR, and ISAK level one. One who introduced more than 20 new recreational games and 30 lead up games, which is now used by many qualified NIS coaches and physical education teachers in their training. His game invention were applauded at International Sports Science Congress, Commonwealth Sports Science Congress, and many other national symposium on physical education and sports sciences, who truly believes in a line that beyond the world, you are totally awesome. The Joint Secretary of Team PEFI, Dr. Chetan Kumar, sir, to propose a vote of thanks. Over to you, sir. Uh, good afternoon to you all. On behalf of Physical Education Foundation of India, I, Dr. Chetan Kumar, Joint Secretary, PEFI, congrats to you all. It was indeed a privilege to have Dr. Lee, former research fellow, Institute for Social Science Studies, University of Putra, Malaysia, and Dr. Pinar Yaprak, Assistant Professor, Ghazi University, Faculty of Sports Sciences, Ankara, Turkey, as a guest lecturer in our PFP Live 2.0. Sir, Madam, your insightful lecture on recreation and physical education, where do they fit and way forward, was full of wisdom and information. Even we, the teachers and organizers, were enlightened by your enlightening talk. I feel the teachers and professors who attend this lecture will be able to extract best result out of the students by applying these tips in their teaching and classrooms and in the ground level. Once again, I thank you, sir and madam, for having spared your precious time for all of us. I lastly thank Dr. Amrita Pandey, Dr. Sharad Sharma, Organizing Secretary, PEFI Live, Dr. Piyush Kumar Jain, Organizing Secretary, PEFI, and Uma Shankar for all the technical setup and for everyone for having organized this wonderful lecture. Sir, once again, Dr. Lee and Dr. Pinar Yaprak, congrats to you for this wonderful session. Thank you, sir and madam. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you to the and lastly, and Namaste India. Yep. Uh, thank you to the organizer for inviting us to, to share. And I hope uh, this uh, little sharing contribution will benefit all the physical educators. It's just that, uh, that because of the time frame, uh, we cannot go in too detail and to specifically in many of the issues. It's such a wide subject. So, you know, physical education studies, a degree program usually takes four years. So how do you talk in, uh, present it in one hour? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, thank you. That's why in our, yeah, in our, you, you see the degree program is four years full time, you know, so, uh, for physical education. So uh, we are just sharing in one hour. So yeah. that's all as far as we could go under the constraints. But of course, uh, we cannot give all the answers. There are so many issues involved. It's up to the different educators, the audience, to work it out how it applies to the individual cases situation. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much for everyone who joined us today, watched us, and who in nowadays it's not so easy for anybody who contributed to this uh, organization. Thanks to Pepi, to Amrita, everyone who involved. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up our second session of PEFI 2.0. On behalf of Physical Education Foundation of India, I once again thank you all for making time in your busy schedules to join us here. It's been our pleasure to host this event and I wish you all a pleasant day. Thank you.